playing cards. They're everywhere. Everyone probably has at least one deck of cards somewhere in their house. A junk drawer, perhaps. Maybe not this many or in these locations. But I'm sure there's a deck of Star Wars cards or Elvis cards or some other kind of souvenir cards lying around the house somewhere. Millions of decks are sold every year and the number of decks of cards that exist around the world are staggering. So how old are cards? And is there hidden knowledge in cards? Jacks, queens, kings, and aces? How did it all start? Well, let's dive in. The first reference is from China around 850 AD. Theories suggest they were invented in Persia and then spread to China, India, and Egypt, and then around the 1400s from Egypt into Europe. This was also the introduction of the tarot cards from Egypt to Europe, spread by gypsies. The term gypsy is a traveler from Egypt, originally thought to have traveled from India, then to Egypt, then to Europe, bringing with them, I guess you could say, souvenir cards to use for their fortune telling. Gypsy is slang for Egyptian. Egyptian, gypsy. The main focus here is the standard 52 card deck, but first let me mention a few things about tarot cards. The 78 card tarot deck consists of the minor arcana, which is the standard 52 cards, along with four extra court cards, one for each of the four suits, equaling 56 cards, and the major arcana, which is the 22 tarot cards. The original 21 tarot cards, not including the full card, are believed to be surviving remnants of the Great Library of Alexandria, which was destroyed. Its first destruction is known to have happened in 48 BC. Now I say the original 21 cards because some believe the unnumbered full card was added centuries later when the 78 card tarot deck was created. The Great Library of Alexandria was said to have contained the entirety of ancient knowledge and wisdom. Legend says that shortly after its destruction, the original 21 or 22 cards were created in Fez, Morocco by a convention of wise men and the highest skilled individuals. The cards or pieces were formulated into a secret symbol system to preserve the ancient mystical knowledge lost in the destruction. Remember, the Roman Catholic Church considered this pre-Christian pagan knowledge to be a threat to the power of the church, and in 391 AD, an early Christian emperor ordered all pagan temples be destroyed. The tarot was meant to preserve the ancient wisdom in secret from the oppression of the dominant church. The ancient wisdom was a tool to help seekers of truth to find self-knowledge and reach their full potential in life. The main language of the tarot is archetypal symbols, the language of the soul. It's a language without words. I'm sure everyone is familiar with the standard deck of 52 cards with jacks, queens, kings, and aces, but how old are they? Here are some things to look at. According to Chinese chronology, the art of printing was discovered in 50 AD under the reign of Ming Song I, then in 105 AD, the invention of paper. Between the 6th and 7th century, Egypt are the earliest examples of textiles printed with wood blocks. The Chinese word for playing cards, yetzu, apparently implied to dominoes or domino cards, which are possibly the ancestors of the playing cards we know of today. Cards were made of wood, paper, or tin. Paper cards were made by gluing three or four pieces of paper together to make a type of pasteboard. In China, 
a book of antidotes written in the 11th century by historian Ouyang Su has been cited as placing the invention of playing cards in the middle of the Tang Dynasty, which is between 618 and 906. That's well before the board game Monopoly. Most of the recorded history regarding the 52 card deck starts from the 1400s when it began to spread across Europe. A diversity of playing card types and styles began to emerge because of different cultural contexts and printing techniques. Early cards had no king or queen, but instead had two marshals. Italian, Spanish, and German cards had different variations of the three male court cards. It was France who added the queen. In some cases, kings were mounted on horseback. In other cases, kings were seated on thrones. There were queens in attendance, horsemen and foot soldiers. The four suits also varied quite a bit. In Germany, Spain, and Italy, the suits used were the vase, sword, denier, which is a coin, and the baton. A German variation used hearts, bells, acorns, and leaves. Other suits included beasts, birds, flowers, helmets, roses, crowns, pennies, and rings. Besides the familiar hearts, spades, clubs, and diamonds, there are an entire slew of suits. In tarot decks, you'll find suits like cups, wands, pentacles, and swords. This deck has cups, wands, swords, and discs. The disc is actually a shield. As cards spread throughout Europe, many new card games developed. In 1605 was the first reference of the popular game 21, or known today as Blackjack. Until the end of the 18th century, the backs of cards were plain white or blank. As card games became more popular and cards were used over and over, the backs would become marked and then recognizable to other players. So card manufacturers began to print repeating geometric patterns on the reverse sides to minimize the problem. This was the beginning of all the fancy back designs we see today. And in 1990, with the rise of computers, cards became digital. Although the main 52 cards have changed quite a bit since the 1400s, the basic concept has not. There are 52 cards, four suits, 13 cards per suit, and 12 picture or court cards. So what's the significance of these numbers? Is there a hidden meaning? Suppose you were to discover some vital information or knowledge of something, but you also knew that because of the popular consensus of people and their belief systems that you'd be ridiculed or killed for mentioning it or that you knew the knowledge would be destroyed by those who don't know any better, such as the destruction of the Great Library of Alexandria. You might decide to seek out a few others that do understand and together come up with a way to preserve the knowledge. How about the mathematics encoded in the Great Pyramid? It's been there for 5,000 years keeping its secrets encoded in the dimensions of the structure very intact. Only until today are we beginning to see it. You can research this if you like, but the subject here is cards. The secret encoding in the 52 card deck is knowledge that most everyone already knows. So it's kind of not a secret anymore. And in this day and age, thank God, you won't get killed for knowing it or saying it. Let's do the math. The 52 card deck is like a layout for a calendar year. It contains the information required to follow the cycles of Earth. 52 cards, 52 weeks in a year. 12 face cards or court cards, the 12 months in a year. Four suits, the four seasons in a year. Thirteen cards in each suit, thirteen moon cycles in a year, and the thirteen weeks in each season. 
great information to know if you're growing crops to feed many people. Now if you take all 52 cards and add up all the pips or values, pips are the spots on the cards, meaning take each suit and add up all the cards. Ace equals 1, 2 equals 2, 3 equals 3, 4 equals 4, 5 is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, Jack equals 11, Queen equals 12, and King equals 13. Add all those numbers together, the total is 91. Then multiply the 91 by the four suits, and it equals 364. Add one pip for the leftover joker, and it equals 365 pips in a deck. 365 days in a year. And if you're wondering about those pesky leap years, a second optional joker or guarantee card is supplied to guarantee the numbers come out correct at 366. Now the guarantee card is to guarantee the quality of the cards from the manufacturer, but I'll let you decide. It's amazing what can be hidden right in front of our eyes and never be seen. Preserving knowledge by spreading cards around the world is pretty ingenious. Even if someone altered the deck with different suits, or by adding a queen to the mix, or changing the court cards, the information is still intact. So the next time you see a deck of cards, um, never mind, it's just a deck of cards. Thanks for watching.